Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Virgo. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Virgo, your message came to me in a new way I've never experienced before. So yesterday I pulled cards for you. There was no message. Didn't matter how many cards I pulled. They just were not speaking to me. Today though, a big uh, section of the, of the stack here kind of threw itself on the floor all in one big clump. And when I picked it up, there was your message. It was so easy. I didn't even pull cards. I pulled like the last two cards just to fill it in because there wasn't enough cards, but it was like an instant message. I didn't have to do anything. And I feel like, I feel like maybe that's part of your message here today because you've got this queen of fire here on the table. And I want to say that energy maybe applies to her in one of two ways. Either she's coming into your life in a way that is very unique or the effect that she's having on you is that it's almost like a streamlining or bringing some sort of an efficiency into a process that you're working on for example um it's like the impact that she's having on you is that well it's interesting i was gonna say that things get easier but but we'll get to we'll get to the details when we get into the cards okay so i'm doing your reading with a stack of blended decks. So you will see a mix of several decks in your reading today. So we've got the seven of fire on the split and the messenger of air, apparently. Messenger of air and the seven of fire. And then count your chickens at the bottom of the deck. Okay, so this is kind of a frustrating energy, right? The seven of fire and the count your chickens. It's like something something is frustrating to you. Something is more of a struggle than it needs to be. Maybe there's somebody here that is demanding, demanding for you to, like I said, be more efficient or is just demanding something of you that you're having a hard time delivering or that you're having a hard time maybe uh, kind of staying in alignment with this energy pressing against you. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like trying to elevate above it, but it's kind of really, uh, kind of gnarling up your energy or your process. But then right underneath that was the messenger of air and then this two of water, this two of cups here. So I feel like maybe that's this queen of fire is coming in with this much gentler, peaceful energy. So it's almost like a compare and contrast between whoever, whoever this is, who seems to be really putting you in a bit of a funk or is like, it could be their presence that's actually making your process much more difficult to navigate. And this one, this queen of fire, who seems to be coming in with, with this much gentler energy here. It's a, it's a message of support or an energy of support that their presence maybe is really um, smoothing out your energy. Okay, I'll just put all these cards back where they belong. Okay, let's pull you an overall energy from the Lifruma Healing Oracle. interesting okay I'll talk about that in a second <laughs> returning light okay so this card came up I want to say a couple of months ago and it was talking about um signaling kind of using light and, and reflecting and signaling energy across space across distances returning light but this okay but this feels like it's has something to do with this queen of fire today because it's this return it's being returned to you maybe it's going back to i think it was a pisces reading maybe it's going back to that maybe you kind of sent out an intention or a signal a couple of months ago and this is it returning to you because this is the returning light this is like the answer I hope that makes sense. See what I mean? It's like you sent out a signal maybe a couple of months ago when I did that original reading with this card in it. I, like I said, I'm pretty sure it was a Pisces reading. I think it had something to do with still holding a piece or still holding their a piece of their light. I think it's, it was called something like that. And then it feels like this is like the response. So it's taken, it's taken a bit of time. It's taken enough time maybe that you're, you maybe aren't actually completely putting it together that this is the answer to your question in a sense. 
So it might not be as, as um, straightforward as you sending a message to somebody or trying to connect with somebody or communicate with somebody and then them, this is them finally responding to you. It might not be that direct or that obvious. Do you see what I mean? But it might be. It might be actually. Okay. So we're starting with three of earth here. And what I was just seeing is that I wanted to say originally that this is you kind of working together with this queen of fire and it still is. But the fascinating thing is, is now that this count your chickens one is here on the table, they seem to be this crow energy up at the top of the card right here. And then this queen of fire seems to be this fox down here. So there's this interest. It's almost like this tug of war actually between kind of you and what it is that you're focused upon. Cause I feel like this here in the center, this fairy with the apple here, it's kind of like you were already involved in something. You already have something going on. And suddenly you've got this fox and this crow kind of almost like fighting over you in a sense, fighting over your attention. If that's the case, it feels to me like obviously this one is the one that's the really supportive one, right? It's the one that's kind of lifting you up, giving you the nudge. And the count your chickens is somebody whose energy is really having, I mean, this is the, this is the comparison. This is the one, the, the one's impact on you. And this is the other one's impact on you. You see what I mean? And this card, this two of cups is actually the most tranquil, peaceful card in all of my decks. When this card comes out, it's like ultimate peacefulness. So, okay. So let me just keep trying to keep my cards in order here. So I feel like this queen of fire is coming in and kind of, um, well, elevating you work, wanting to work with you, wanting to add to your life or your process by bringing something to you. That could be the big difference too, is that this one seems to be wanting something from you. And this queen of fire seems to have something to offer you. You see what I mean? What she has to offer you and it doesn't have to be a woman necessarily. It's just that it's coming through that way because that's the card that appeared. Um, is that she seems to want to show you something, demonstrate something, teach you something that actually with the page of water. Okay, this is the interesting thing. I almost feel like this queen of fire isn't necessarily typically a fiery energy because they're coming out. Well, they're coming out with the queen, I'm sorry, the messenger of air, which is a more delicate energy. And then this two of cups, right? And then here they're this page of cups. So I feel like they're actually a very watery energy. In fact, maybe they're the Pisces that we were talking about, right? So the page of water and the night of fire. It's almost like this watery energy that has been ignited into this fiery energy and therefore is stepping forward. Okay, reluctantly isn't the right word because I feel like they're coming very forward very powerfully. Like they've got a very passionate or engaging message and an immediacy about the fact that they want to communicate or show you something but because they're this page of water here it's saying something like that usually they're there this is it's like it's out of character for them this is not something that they would generally do like they're kind of stepping forth maybe like in modesty because their message is big or, or their energy is big. And it's all, it's almost as if they're a little bit apologetic about the fact that they've got so much energy coming towards you. It kind of just feels like a big hug actually. It's like uh, meeting somebody for the first time and them just really wanting to embrace you. It might not literally be that, but it's like that, at least energetically, or that's how they're feeling. And maybe that's what this page of water is talking about. That's their impulse is to want to embrace you, but they're, they're holding back. That's why they've got this page of water here. This, this kind of like, it's not reluctance. It's not reluctancy. It's like a holding back. It's a holding back or they're holding back in some regard because I feel like they also at the same time are being very open and sharing a lot with you. Right? So it's like even though they, they could be coming across fairly strongly, they're holding something back. They're holding an aspect back. Okay. But whatever it is that they are sharing with you, this night of fire has been talking to me about somebody who's recently learned something that has ignited them. It's become their passion to the point where they have become quickly become masterful at it and they're now wanting to share it or teach it with others. Okay. 
So that's what it feels like. It feels like they have recently stumbled into something, discovered something. Maybe it's connected to you. Maybe that's why they're bringing it to you and they want to express it to you that look at what it is that I've come upon, right? It's like they want to share this with you, this passion of theirs. And with the seven of earth coming up, this is really fascinating. I haven't read this card this way in a long time. It's been talking to me about kind of where you are in your process, which it being the seven is kind of a midstream, like a mid level of a midway, you're part way there. That's how I've been reading it for a while, but today it wants to come through with this kind of crown opening energy, right? It's like this, whatever it is that this, this, um, queen of fire is bringing to you, it's activating your crown in some way. That's fascinating. It's like when their energy, when their words, when their consciousness touches you, it's a crown opening. I had this experience recently when I met somebody recently and when their energy kind of touched me, it was this white and blue kind of burst in my crown that just opened like this. That's what this is looking like to me. When you, um, when you communicate with them and it might not be like the initial conversation, but at some point there's an effect where it's really opening you up. Maybe it's opening up your imagination, but what's okay. You've got the sun here right behind you. So there's something, there's something really fascinating going on here. The sun is behind you, but this sun card is a unique card. It talks about actually kind of multi-dimensionality to me because I don't know how to communicate this without telling the whole story about it, but it's like there's kind of two dimensions here. There's the dimension up here where this figure is, but then there's this dimension here, which I want to say is probably just the mundane realm, the earthly realm, the everyday life. And they've kind of opened this um, space and they're allowing, it's allowing light or energy or communication or whatever to stream down into the ordinary, right? So it's kind of like an extraordinary energy, an extraordinary idea, an extraordinary state of consciousness. Maybe there's something about uh, spending time with this one that is putting you into this kind of elevated state of consciousness, which is allowing you to access kind of inspiration or ideas or visions that you're not usually accessing. You see what I'm saying? It's kind of like it's creating this opening within you, but it, and especially because it's behind you. To me, that talks about this kind of profound inner world thing, right? I hope that makes sense. And I'm not doing it justice. But the fact that the sun is behind you, the fact that this knight of fire, this queen of fire is standing in front of you. So they're literally in your physical experience. But when they're engaging with you, it's having this profound impact on your inner landscape. They might not be perceiving it because it's inner, right? So it's like, this is what's happening to you while you're spending time with them. Or maybe after it's kind of like you take what it is that they've said to you. And when you're back in your own space, it kind of, uh, it's almost like getting a download that then just opens and opens and opens. It kind of fractals out. That's fascinating. So it's almost as if your meeting or your conversation with them is just the beginning of that is what it's feeling like to me. And it's like, it stays with you so that when you move, as you're moving through time, after this initial engagement, after this conversation, there's a, a continual opening or expansion. See what I mean? I'm seeing like all this fractaling energy that is, is expanding outward but it's kind of this inner thing. So it's basically like when you meet with them and maybe this happens multiple times, or maybe this is just like a one-off conversation that it's like, you're not okay. You know that there's a significance to it in the moment, but it reveals itself more and more to you over time, like a download, right? It's almost like they just give you the, the initial package and it takes you some time to open it and unpack it. It's fascinating. I've never seen kind of like a download coming this way, which is funny because it's like I was talking about with the cards, about how the cards came in a new way today, right? So it's like you usually think of <coughs> getting a download like in a dream or just kind of an instant like knowingness that drops into your consciousness and it takes you some time to realize the significance of it or the, the depth of it. This is like they're saying something to you that is almost like 
giving you a complete package that you then have to open up over time. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna move on from that. So, it's interesting because, like I said, it feels like they may, it may just be kind of a one-time thing, a one-time meeting, because there is here, just below that in the cards where it looks like they're kind of um, backing away, like they're not, they're not somebody that's going to be in your life for a long time is what it looks like to me. It looks like this kind of brief encounter or just a very brief relationship, but it has a huge impact on you with three of water and the eight of earth. It's talking about almost like this um, being inundated, maybe with watery emotionally, emo watery, emotional and or kind of psychic energy kind of flooding into your work or your everyday. This eight of pentacles, the eight of earth, sometimes talks to me about work or your craft or your career perhaps, but sometimes it's just everyday life, right? So it's like this is, even though they're coming in as this fiery energy, and this is what I'm talking about, it's kind of like it comes in, they come in with a bang or they come in like with, it stands out, they stand out, but what they leave you with is all this watery energy, which is slower to realize or slower to understand everything that I was talking about with this download. You see what I mean? So they're leaving you kind of with all of this watery energy in your everyday life or in your work. It's adding to your work, but it's also, interestingly, it seems to be having a really profound impact on you in the sense that it could be, it's like it's flooding, it's flooding your work or because of them, your work is being flooded, which almost feels to me like, for example, if you uh, work in some sort of service related job, it's like, it's like suddenly you're flooded with new clients. You see what I mean? It's like your work is flooded. Your work is becoming exceptionally abundant because of the impact that they're having on you. But it's not, it's not specifically them. See what I mean? Cause I don't feel like they're hanging around even though it does look like there's kind of this partnership or working together. Um, so if you are kind of working together, it doesn't feel long-term. It feels like they're backing away. They could be showing up and helping you kind of get this established and make this really abundant, but then they're backing away. But the other thing that they're doing or the impact that it's having is that it seems to be, well, there's head over heels card here. And then there's also the hanged man. And these three cards together were making me think that it's kind of stretching you and moving you in unusual ways. You see what I mean? Just because of the, of the different positions of these cards. It's also maybe talking about something that was kind of stagnant is now got this kind of head over heels energy in it. It's kind of like maybe your work or your, um, your specific, uh, gift your specific thing that you do was feeling a bit stagnant or was maybe kind of losing a lot of this fiery, passionate energy. But now this is at the center of it, this head over heels. It's almost like you're falling back in love with your work again, or you're falling back in love with your craft or falling back in love with your everyday life, right? Because it's so abundant now, it's just so kind of lush at this point. But it's also talking about the fact that it's kind of like it's bending you or stretching you in ways that I want to say you're welcoming of. It's like you you want to be challenged. You, you're you enjoying being challenged and stretched in this way. And then with the fishbowl coming up. The, okay, well, this is what it's talking about. The fishbowl and the queen of fire. This is where I was getting this idea of the fact that even if you are kind of co-creating or working in partnership in some way, and they be, may actually be a really dominant character in your life, it feels like it's very brief because the fishbowl and this queen of fire, it looks to me like this one is being pushed to the foreground and this one is being pulled to the background. And that's this queen of fire almost kind of backing away or stepping out of the scene. And you're the one that's kind of being focused on here. You see what I mean? It's fascinating because it's like, it's almost like they're passing stuff on to you because it, because there's a lot of connection between this queen of fire and this fishbowl energy. See how they almost look like sisters, something like that. But it's also got that 
fishy kind of two of cups energy in it but it's also got all this kind of red fiery energy in it it's almost like they're making you over in some way there or there's this lasting impact where even though they may be stepping away there's it's still there do you see what i mean their influence is still there or it's like that you will always be touched by this energy but it also feels like it's like they're wanting to help you kind of like shine a light on you and it's not about them at all it's like they're wanting to help you be noticed or help you succeed right and they're just and it's not necessarily that they're leaving your life but it's like here maybe it was more of a, a equal partnership or co-creation and here at least if they are staying involved they're doing it kind of out of view where you're the one in in public view and so you're the one being seen but it's like their their mark is still there anybody who anybody who knows this queen of fire is going to know that that they're that you've been kind of influenced or mentored by them if that's appropriate here it's like even though they're even though they're out of view or not known by others if okay if if somebody does know this queen of fire they're gonna see the resemblance you see what i mean they're gonna see the similarities it's a little bit like a passing of the torch but that doesn't feel completely appropriate because it's not as if this queen of fire is there she's not necessarily giving you anything or she's not necessarily um not doing whatever she does it's not like she's passing it to you and now it's yours she's still who she is she's still engaged in whatever she's engaged in but it's just that you are picking up some aspect of it is what i want to say and it could just be this kind of the sun energy the fact that the sun behind you it's maybe that the sun is almost it could be something like this this queen of fire may already have this kind of sun connection whatever that means they have this um access to this energy down into the mundane they could be a good channel for spirit for example and then after you meet them it's kind of i keep wanting to say this kind of touched by an angel idea because because of this right like you've been touched by an angel like after this meeting you can't undo the influence or the impression that they've had on you you've been touched by them forever more right this like they leave their impression they leave their imprint on you so it's almost as if it's something like that that they maybe they have been touched by an angel meaning that they have been touched by the divine that they have this kind of active divine spark for example like they've got this sun energy but I want to say that maybe it's new, new for them because they are this watery energy. See what I mean? They're, they're this water being, for example, that has recently come in connection to this sun, this, some sort of an illumination, some sort of an epiphany has come through to them. And for whatever reason, they want to bring it to you. And when they bring it to you, it's almost as if it's having a similar impact on you because now it's like you have the sun with you, right? You see what I mean? That's why it's like now you're both touched by an angel. You both have that sun kissed quality about you. You see what I mean? So that's what I'm saying. It's not that she's, she's giving it to you and now it's yours because she's still touched by that and now you're also touched by it so you're both carrying that energy but um like i said she's kind of maybe leaving the scene or backing away or maybe it's just you have this initial kind of um really it's like it's like meeting somebody and you spend all of your time with them for a period of time and then they kind of fade away a little bit it's not as if they're leaving your life but it, they're not as dominant you see what i mean they are stepping back in some form and then this divinely connected heart is the last card in the reading which is absolutely stunning and it's just talking about this it's this process it's basically okay and this is maybe this download aspect this fact that it's kind of like this maybe this transformation or this realization that the the profound impact that they've had on you takes time to realize right because of everything that i was saying about this kind of download or fractaling thing because this here with the sun and the crown here if you combine them together or bring this sun forward into the 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 
conscious, like the, the frontal cortex, I don't know, the frontal, the front of your consciousness, um, it looks like this, right? So that's like you bringing that energy forward and kind of wearing it and being it and living it. But that takes time. And it may actually happen like after this one has has faded away or has like the conversation has ended or the relationship maybe even has ended that it takes time for this. It's almost like this realization or this epiphany on your part. And it's interesting how we're talking about the kind of light bouncing back and forth, right? So it's like the light has, has touched this one and then they want to kind of send it to you. Do you see what I mean? Okay, so I'm gonna to continue to pull cards and create an extended. If you're interested in that, the link is in the description. And if not, I will see you next time, Virgo. Thanks, bye.